live in quarantine from her house, here's today's host, Ashley Black. Welcome back to a new episode of The Fresh Take. I'm Ashley Black of Jet Fresh Flowers. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. We have two very special guests who are known internationally for their amazing floral design workshops <laughs> and their stars of the new Netflix competition series, The Big Flower Fight. Yes. Let's give a warm welcome to Sarah Campbell and Jordan Marks of Intrigue Design. Hello! <laughs> Was that intro corny enough for you? <laughs> I think it matched what I was saying. Because yeah, we just said we were stars. That's what I heard. I heard we're international superstars. Well, I don't think she said that, actually. That's what I, I know. Didn't say that's what she said. I said that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's okay. You guys are definitely stars. You guys are absolutely stars in your own right. You are on a show that is getting reception from all over the world. It is so amazing. So Isn't that crazy? It, it is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. What a ride. Well, before we jump into the show, um, you know, we got a lot of people, there's a lot of people who know who you are, but for those who don't and they're tuning in for the first time, I like to just, you know, get a little introduction about each of you and uh, yeah, just, um, I want to learn, I want to learn your story before we learn about the show. We we'll start with Sarah, if that's right. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Sarah Campbell. I am a wedding florist. I started as a wedding planner and then as soon as I got my hands on flowers, I was hooked. And I jumped full force into my floral business and built this company that I'm so proud of. My company is Intrigue Designs, and I focus on high-end weddings and social events, weddings that, that have clients that are just longing for flowers as their expression of love. And uh, about three years ago, four years ago, I don't even know how many years ago, we yeah workshops and classes on how to do things like flower walls and floral chandeliers and large-scale designs and that led us on this national tour all across the country teaching these workshops and that's actually about the time that Jordan Jordan <laughs> Jordan that's me that Jordan jo jo <laughs> you want me to take go, take it over from here yeah you okay, can great. so my my name is Jordan. <laughs> My name is Jordan and I work for Sarah. I originally came on board as kind of um, an assistant back in... Hold on. Oh, I hired her as a personal assistant. Yeah. She actually never did that job no. because I decided I didn't like asking anyone to do my laundry or yeah. my dishes or make doctor's appointments. So I actually didn't utilize personal assistant at all. Yeah, it's actually they literally within the first minutes I showed up, Sarah was like, I know why I brought you here, but erase it because it's not what happening. Um, yeah. And it ended up really well. So I started kind of in an assistant role and then slowly but surely kind of morphed into a behind the scenes, Sarah's right hand woman, all around helper of all things. So I do a lot of behind the scenes marketing, social media, um, copywriting, and then slowly but surely has been morphing into the in front of the camera type stuff. So I'm, I do a whole lot of things, who knows? That's awesome. And do you get, I, I mean, before the show, have you been getting hands on with flowers and getting all in the dirtiness? And So yes and no. The Usually my hands on flower stuff is moving the flowers from one place to another. <laughs> I normally leave, Proper. you gotta remember when we come to these workshops, most of the designs are actually being done by our attendees, the very hands-on design workshop experience. So Sarah does a lot of the designing and our attendees do a lot of the designing. Yeah. I was listening to a lot of the designing, but not hands-on learning. Um, but I think now I'm much, I'm, I'm ready to start jumping in to the, the more hands-on stuff. Cause I learned a lot over this show, man. I yeah. learned a bunch. I, I can imagine. And Sarah, before before Jordan came on board, what was what was your your day to day like? Like that you felt like you needed somebody to come in and just like grow. Busy, so you busy. <laughs> so I am busy anyway. Um, I was at this point where uh, we have, of course, we have the Intrigue Experience Conference, which is kind of what launched the um, Intrigue Across America tour. Okay. And. We were about three months from the time we were going on tour, and I felt like, given that I was going to be traveling so much, that I was going to need to have an assistant that would be on the ground at home to make sure that all the paperwork are taken care of and 
make sure that my life still continued to to work to even life. I, to, to life so I wasn't there um that's actually why we brought Jordan on um she kind of joked it was the first few minutes it was actually probably the first few days <laughs> when I realized how smart she was so I hired her to be my personal assistant and I realized that well not only did I not want to give her those jobs <laughs> but her brain was so beautiful and so such a compliment to what I was doing Thanks. and she didn't wait for me to ask her to do a job she would see that I was writing a blog post or I was writing an article or, or working on something for an interview and she would come in and just build upon it. And so she made herself really indispensable within that first month. And that's part that she was going to come on tour with us, uh, which had never been the plan. It was not in the budget. Uh, but I also am a travel junkie. Like I love traveling. So when I, came to work for Sarah and kind of overheard that this is what was happening. I kind of said, now hold on a second. How do I get out? How do I, yeah, how do I get involved? Because I can be of use here. And then it just has kind of grown from there. Yeah. So Jordan's primary responsibility then was, we, we call her the communications director of the company, but she kind of does lots of things. Yeah. Our primary focus is anything having to do with Oh art. my gosh. <laughs> no Fresh way. Swag. Oh my god, a special yeah. appearance from Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, what you got on? What are you so handsome, Mr. Campbell? Mr. Campbell, yeah, looking great. Yeah, You're just for right a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, that Kenny has lost 30 pounds no. since the quarantine started. No? Oh my god, you're the only one. <laughs> I know. Not me. 30 pounds. That's amazing. I'm actually, I've joined him. I'm down 15. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, since the last time you saw me. Congratulations, guys. Really. That's amazing. <laughs> In the real life. And you're showing good for straight, right? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm involved in none of that. It's not funny. I've been eating a bag of Doritos a day and loving it. I'm loving that aesthetic. <laughs> that on Instagram all the time. I'm like, yep. I, I dig it. Bad weather, Doritos. I, no, I think that's right. Right. We'll pull back in. Sorry. <laughs> got distracted by the handsome fella in the jet fresh sweat. You can't get mad at that. You know no. me. I married one. Yeah. <laughs> so true. <laughs> oh, it's so corny. Oh, it's great. Well, I love that. Um, and and what would you say that like like you guys your relationship together? Do you guys have like a, a sisterly best friend kind of vibe or a little motherly daughter? Like what is like like your your dynamic as like a relationship with you two? Or I mean, or not no family, just friends and we we keep friends. Friends. Prada. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's it's more of a mother daughter role. Yeah, I think so. Um, I do. So when we were, I had my daughter Skylar as our photographer touring with me and Jordan mm -hmm. and everyone refers to me as their mom. Mm -hmm. I thought she was your daughter too. I'm so sorry in the beginning. Well, and especially because Sarah's daughter and I immediately became best friends. And so they see us and the way we interact with Sarah. And I think they just assume that we're one big old family, which I mean, we are, yeah. we definitely are. Um, and at this point I just roll with it. Like it doesn't even phase me anymore when someone's like, Oh, I love your mom or where's your mom? And I'm just like, whoop, she's over there. Like it just goes right over my head. And it's good friends, but it's not like we hang out and have a lot of common interests. We do like the same things, but we're not like, we're not just gal palling around. Yeah. We are working when we're together. So true. So how are you guys staying busy during this quarantine? I know we mentioned some Doritos, but what, uh, what else is keeping you guys entertained? Oh, Sarah and I have been busy. We have not stopped. Um, well, we initially, when the quarantines first happened, you know, we were together. You and I were together wow. in Austin at the floral encounter. And we came back, jumped right into the quarantines, and we are doers and we are helpers. And the first thing we thought to do was give Flores some way to help recover from what we were all going through. Um, so Jordan mostly, um, with my help and guidance, but she did most of the work, put together the Flores Recovery Program, where we pulled together hundreds of pieces of content mm -hmm. and that are all specifically to help the floral world help to move past what we were dealing with. And that was just yeah. the only way we knew how to help. 
So intrigue as a whole doesn't necessarily have an established storefront. Like when we're working, we're normally doing it from Sarah's house or we're working separately. So yeah. quarantine changed the mindset in which we worked, but didn't necessarily change the fact that we are still working. Like yeah. we all have to yeah. do some way to help, some information to share. Um, so yeah, we've, we've been, we pivoted a little bit in terms of what we were doing, but we're still doing and then, of course, the show came out. And from then, it's just been hysteria, mass hysteria in the best possible way. I bet. Did um, Just going back on, on the recovery program, because I love what you guys were doing. Did you find mm -hmm. that once the pandemic began, that people were coming to you guys asking for advice or just uh, needing some kind of, you know, tips or, or how are you doing it to, to keep them moving forward? So yeah. I think that we do get a lot of questions. And um, although I do share and I do try to, teach and educate on what I know. Yeah. There's a lot of things I don't know. And I think it's very important that you not try to teach something you don't know. Um, so that was part of the reason behind this is I don't have the answers, but I know how to get the answers. Yeah. It was pulling these resources together so that when someone did have a question, like here are the answers. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt really strongly, as, uh, strongly about is we saw so many people asking great questions and so many educators and leaders across the industry giving, yeah, yeah, giving great answers. But it was almost overwhelming to go out and look for it because when you're struggling so much or you have these heavy thoughts, the last thing you want to do is really deep dive into where to find the answer. So I thought, why don't we make one space where people can go no matter what the question is, where they know they can find the answer. And so that's what I wanted to do is just when people were struggling and hurting so much, I wanted to make it easy for them to find the information that they really needed. Yeah, a safe space. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love that. That's great. And yeah, and then besides, you know, from all of that, and you know, the situation seems to be cooling down a little bit. That your show came at such a perfect time, mm -hmm. right? It was like, oh, I needed something else to watch. Netflix got old suddenly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only that, but it's such a beautiful and visually exciting show that showcases nature and flowers and I think it was a, the perfect time for something so pretty to come out where people can kind of sit back and go oh look at look at how beautiful yeah well and, and actually you know before I ask because I do want to know about the backstory I'm sure you guys have told that a million times but we are very curious um I am curious did they change the release date of the show based on the pandemic or did no, they no. no this was always no. scheduled yeah we just got lucky yeah they got lucky yeah. with the timing it was meant to be is what yeah. that was well, yeah, exactly. That's perfect. And I, I, yeah, so let, let's get into the big flower fight. Yes, it has been keeping us all so inspired through this whole, this whole pandemic. And uh, in this is, I feel like this has been like the same Groundhog Day week moving forward. Um, how did you guys get involved with the show? What's the story? <laughs> like, what happened here? Um, gosh, it was, for me, um, that they had reached out to me and there was a series of people who had led them in my direction. Okay. Um, kind of like this, this six degrees of separation that by the time I talked to them, there had been multiple people that had said, you need to talk to Sarah Campbell, you need to talk to Sarah Campbell. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how, how that all happened. Uh, and then I needed to have a partner on the show. And so of course my first thought was, um, okay, well I need another florist with me. Uh, and in fact, I did it, reach out to Michelle, um, who you know, with um, yeah. uh, Signature Designs. Yeah. Uh, and as I was kind of trying to find another florist that not only would our personalities complement each other, but we would work well together, I also had this big challenge is that we put a lot of time and effort into keeping the intrigue community, the, this community of florists that we never really intended to gather this community but it's there yeah. what i care for we cherish that so mm -hmm. i wanted to make sure we can could continue to still do our work and i was worried that if jordan was in america and i was off in the uk filming the show that we were going to lose that connection yeah. uh so then jordan said well why don't i just come be with you because you know when she sees an opportunity <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> makes an opportunity opens the door I mean, I was super excited because my background is in theater and I have kind of before defining florals and plants, I had a small career on stage and on screen. So when Sarah was doing this and was worried about the business, I wanted to put myself out there and say, Sarah, it will be difficult, but I know that I can do this with you. It'll be hard, 
because I don't necessarily, know, I'm not a designer, but I know that I'm confident enough on stage and screen and confident enough in your business that I can be with you and support you through this. Um, and then the next, the next challenge was selling, selling the production team on the fact that I'm not a designer, but hey, bring me on your show. And we were kind of nervous about it. But in the end, they ended up loving the idea of this person who has no idea what she's doing being paired with this master florist. And they were like, oh, that's awesome. Let's run with it. She gave you way too much credit there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Well, did you have, did you always want to do the show uh, after you were approached and you were just finding, you know, the right, the right person? Um, did I want to do the show? Yeah, we talked through it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, at first I wasn't sure, like the first like few minutes, maybe for a few hours, um, just because I have so much going on. Mm -hmm. But this seemed like a great way to really highlight flowers. And we haven't really seen flowers in the media. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, a flower show, you know, if we do this, what opportunities can we then open for all these other designers that yeah. we've so built these great relationships with? Um, so it really didn't take very long that I knew I wanted to do one thing one thing that impressed me about this show when before before I was even in the picture when Sarah was talking about it was listening to how they how the production team was selling the show it really became apparent that they weren't trying to make a dramatic you know a head to head competition they wanted something positive yeah beautiful and full of joy to share with people and I really wanted Sarah to do the show because I was saying how often do you, number one get an opportunity to do a show but number two, a show that's so closely aligned with the positivity and the, the sharing of knowledge that you as a business owner try to align yourself with. So I thought that it was a good, a good matchup. Yes. So I was team do the show, and then I was team put me on the show. <laughs> so this actually had come shortly after. So I have been approached multiple times for multiple yeah. different things in this kind of circle. Um, okay. It had been just two weeks earlier that we were on these kind of screening calls for another show altogether. Um, and we felt that this was where our strength was, yeah. was, was in what, what Netflix was it. doing. Yeah. yeah. And, what, and, and to not, to not talk about the other show in case you can't mention or say anything, what was it about this show where you felt like your strengths were more aligned? Um, it was the, the energy, mm -hmm. how do I explain it? Not the energy. It was, the, vibe, the positive vibe. The vibe. The, yeah. They were very clear that we are not looking to have this angry, competitive nature. Like, mm -hmm. we want to show your best strengths. So uh, that was important to me. Whereas with the other, with the other, I don't even know what to call it, the other screenings we were doing, yeah. uh, they, they definitely were looking for drama. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. There's some drama in our life. I'm not oh, yeah. going to pretend there's not. This show is not drama-free. <laughs> oh, it's no, not at all. About drama. Yes. It's a show about flowers and people's relationships in which sometimes things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and let's just, while we're on the topic of drama, you know, there was a little bit of like, of like that competitive, you know, nature that came from it. And do you feel like that was just the, the pressure of the competitions? Or do you think some of the contestants came with a little bit of that like spice you know, we saw what was only edited, but you guys got the, the real, you know, details. Oh, we got the real deal. There's a lot you don't see. <laughs> I can imagine. So, um, everyone in our own right, we are all competitive. We just compete differently. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, everyone on that show, although we were competing for the same prize, we were competing together and we wanted to thrive together. I think that we, I know that we surprise Netflix as a whole, as a group, mm -hmm. um, because we were so community oriented and because we were trying to help each other. And, you know, you saw one instance, but we, we were always working as a team to try to help one another. Yeah. Oh, yes. Those installations were incredibly heavy and tasking. I mean, oh, yeah. how else could you... Although I take it back, we were not always on teamwork, but if yeah. someone was falling and they yeah. needed help, like... We, we, we didn't want to see anyone fail. We were not hyper competitive. So I feel like competitiveness, when you're put under these kinds of time restraints, design restraints and requirements, product disposal, like we didn't have endless types of plants and flowers or endless tools. We were using what they gave us as a collective. 
And those restraints definitely do amplify the competitiveness. But I found that it didn't amplify the competitiveness against against each other against the other teams it more amplified the competitiveness inter-team yeah because when each person wants to do so well and your feelings and your emotions are so heightened there's more room for miscommunication and error and drama in between teams so ever whether they showed it or not every single team on that show was competitive with each other but as a whole we just loved each other we really did I- that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was the, yeah, the, the positivity aspect was just so, it was just so great. Did you guys know though, that there was going to be so many plants going in? I personally was so overwhelmed. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is me. And I, you've probably seen this before. I tend to not ask a lot of questions. Uh, I, if, if there's a good opportunity, it's something that feels like I can connect with. I leap for it. I say yes. I figure it out on the way down. Yeah. And it was one of these cases that I assumed, let me just explain. <laughs> I assume, you know, I knew it was a competition show. I knew it was flowers. I don't even know if they told me it was flowers or not, but I assumed as they were talking to me, that's what it was. <laughs> I also assumed that we were all going to be wedding florists. And I imagine, are you ready for this? I thought the, the challenges would be, big giant bouquets, beautiful tablescapes, perhaps a hoopa or manda, flower crowns. That's what I was expecting. Same. Oh, we got. Do you want to, do you want to tell him when, when Kristen said he wanted the banquet? What happened? Oh, yeah. This is honestly one of my favorite behind the scenes moments from the show. Sarah had her flower, like her rose colored flowered glasses on. And she was looking at everything through flower goggles. Like anytime she could use flowers, think about flowers, incorporate flowers. Because that's what Sarah does. She does it well. Yeah. We had the one banquet episode where the they throne, wanted us to make episode. thrones. Yeah. And Kristen said, and I'm not sure that if they showed this on camera, but behind the scenes when Kristen was talking to us, he said, I want a throne banquet. And Sarah heard bouquet and got so excited and she turned to me and she's like okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna make a giant bouquet and it's gonna be this and it's gonna be that and I said Sarah he he did not say bouquet and she literally was like what (laughs) did not hear banquet at all she only heard what she wanted to hear and I had to reel her back in and say Sarah that's not at all if you make a bouquet we will go home (laughs) we did discuss maybe making it a wedding throne though we did discuss making it a wedding throne and then I just there was just too many plants (laughs) yeah too many plants and what they showcased was correct we saw all these tropicals and thought we've never been to Hawaii so let's make a throne that showcases you know our goals and ambitions and this beautiful culture that they have that we would love to one day experience plus I know tropicals and they had some of those tropicals were cut so those for that throne episode, it wasn't all plants. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some cut flowers. Like I had my Thai leaves. I had the ginger. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those elements, I knew I would be in my comfort zone by pulling in. Some yeah. Cut. Yeah. Um, plus I saw that a lot of the other competitors were going for the green. And it was, most of the plants were green. Yeah. And I felt like for us to stand out, we needed to add some color and some pizzazz. But the it, color queen it almost died on us so maybe we shouldn't talk about that yeah watch the show to <laughs> yeah. find out i know i know i know we don't want to give away too much in case so yeah we don't we don't want to say too much um yeah but you know what was what was it like with you guys dealing with this kind of pressure under the time restraints versus when you do a workshop and you've got those kinds of time restraints it's different kind of yeah. i'm i'm pretty comfortable with time restraints and yeah i only will have a plan in my head i work on time restraints weddings are time restraints Workshops are time restraints. So I kind of organize all my thoughts and I generally do it in a detailed way. We've got multiple pages. We've got this organizational system that if you want to know what I'm thinking, just open the folder and you can read all the notes. Only I'll have a binder. Sarah will have a binder. Every designer will have a binder. And if anyone has questions, boop, you just open it up and you can see what you're supposed to do. But in this case, like this was really happening. They were really saying, okay, we're on a sea creature episode. Here's your sea creature. Go. Here's your pole. Do it. <laughs> right now, you have this amount of time. And they were not joking about that time. No. They were strict about it. And 
often they said that we had that amount of time, but often it was less because that time included us going to get the plants, us planning and sketching our designs. Like if it is that is Jordan, to be fair, that is part of the design process. So it's Yes. Yeah, but I think that's, I think a lot of people forget about that when they see the show. They, they say, you have 16 hours, and then suddenly we're building. That's yeah. how it works. It's yeah. 16 hours, and then we're sketching, and then we're planting plants, and then we're getting the plants, and then we're building. Can I ask you just real quickly? Because Ryan and I, when we were watching it, with, with the lemur, for example, did, did you know lemur. right away, I, like, did they give you guys a photo reference of any of these animals? Nothing? No. You guys got to do this all on the top of your head? Um... Yes and no. Yeah, for the most part, I, yes. I go reload. Like we had a, we had a, we had breaks. Yeah, totally. Like we totally Google Google yeah. because we weren't hundred percent sure. Yeah, okay, okay. But it actually looks. If you really look closely, there's been a few memes. It's kind okay. of a kitty cat. It's a cat. It's oh. face. It's a hundred percent a cat. It's a cat. It's just sitting there, all cute. So yeah. I think had they asked us to make a cat, we would have won. We would have won if it was a cat. But it was. I liked it a little, a little fluffy. It looked so. Okay, cute. but that lemur's face though was so freaking cute. It was like I would love. I would, if that was a real thing, I would have it as a pet. So cute. The lemur is actually my personal favorite from the entire show, regardless of the. Really. Cat. The lemur is my favorite because. It, I just felt like we did so well considering we had no idea what we were doing. Like, I had no grasses. Okay, I just got over figuring out how to put plants in a beetle. And now you want me to use grasses that I've never touched. I didn't even know the yeah. names of these grasses. And I, it, I was so stressed. They, you know, they didn't show. We, we spent a good hour, maybe more looking at this Just metal frame staring. being like oh my god what are we gonna do mm -hmm. yeah what's the plan how to do it the yeah. fact that we were able to pull our thoughts together and we were able to complete a design that we were so proud of mm -hmm. myself more than jordan yeah. <laughs> that lemur was actually one of the hardest ones for me on a personal level but i'm very thankful that it happened because during that lemur i felt the most out of my depth I felt like I was dead weight. I didn't know what I was doing. And when you are building something in which you know its only purpose is to be judged, and then you are not happy with the thing that you've made, knowing someone is going to stand there and tell you that they are also unhappy, that kind of personal pressure is really difficult. But after we didn't go home that week, I was really relieved because I... I thought, okay, that is the lowest of the low that I can possibly feel. So the stakes get lighter from here on out because I know I've hit my yeah. personal rock bottom. Okay. You can see if you watch an episode back, oh. there, there's a part in there where Jordan is getting snippy with me. In fact, a friend was watching the episode with me and she turned, she's like, so does Jordan still have a job? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if everyone will notice that though. Yeah, I don't know if it'll notice it. But we have a lot of those. People have said the same thing to me about what happens later on in the series about, you still work for her? <laughs> like, yeah, I do. I, do. <laughs> I mean, have you guys had moments like that, you know, before that just, you know, if this happened in the show that you guys yeah. did, just brush it off? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. But that's what good teamwork is, isn't it? Good teamwork is not being afraid to put your foot down and say, I don't agree with this. And then moving on. That's, how, that's yeah. what happens. And um, so what Jordan was referencing was um, on an episode where I had a particular challenge listening. Um, <laughs> and it was, it for me, a little bit embarrassing. But I, this really does happen in our work relationship. <laughs> like, and it kind of goes both ways that, yeah. you know, sometimes one person's listening more, sometimes the other one, usually me, not listening. <laughs> uh, but if you just get angry and it, you uh, don't work together, then your business won't thrive. Yeah. Like your life won't thrive. You're just angry and bitter about things all the time. And we didn't have time to get bitter. So yeah. we brushed it off. And in, in the real world and in a competition world, neither Sarah or I are mean or bitter or angry people. That is not how we operate. We're both happy people, full of energy and full of joy. But I think that is why sometimes when things get hard, that Sarah and I both sometimes do struggle to communicate because that's not our natural mode. We're no. not angry, mean, fight it out kind of people. So when that happens, sometimes Sarah and I both have to take a step back and go, okay, what are we actually talking about right now and how do we resolve it? And then we do and we move on. Yes. We move on with our life. 
Well, it's because you guys are both planners. And because of it. Yeah, like you guys are both planners. You guys like to have a process and something to go back to with this yeah, situation. Exactly. With like, and like Sarah was saying with the binder, whereas normally you would flip open that binder and I could see, like literally on paper, I have what Sarah is thinking. <laughs> and that kind of situation, I don't know Sarah's thoughts and Sarah moves, Sarah knows what she's doing when it comes to flowers and design. So her mind would move a million miles an hour and me with no experience would be looking at Sarah going, I have no idea what she's doing or what she's thinking. And Sarah would forget to clue me into that because she's so used to knowing what she's doing and what she's thinking. So, but honestly, it was fun. It was a fun, even though what didn't always look fun or feel fun, what we learned was fun. And we went through a journey and a transformation that not a lot of people would get the opportunity to experience. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was a great opportunity. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Amazing. I could talk to you guys forever, by the way. This is See, so we love to talk. <laughs> No, but we love to talk. We're big talkers. No. And I just, I'm really enjoying the story and what you guys are, are just sharing. And, and what I, what I also was curious about, because you have all this experience now, what, what have you learned and what are you like, okay, I love this method. I want to bring this back and apply for intrigue oh okay i have fallen in love with potted plants okay i have been working plants into all my designs mm -hmm. you know i and i used to this years ago and i'd forgotten where i would wire a potted plant into my centerpieces and use it as like a hydrangea or use it as a big focal yeah. and the, i I had gotten away from that. So this just reignited this passion for plants. Mm -hmm. And I am going to expect that with the result of this show and then the other fun stuff that is kind of all in the works with plants and flowers right now, you're going to see a big insurgence of, of brides and grooms and even your local florists selling more and more plants. You know, people love the sustainability aspect and it adds some additional texture. We've already seen greenery make a huge impact and be in demand the last few years. Now people are gonna take it just one step forward. And I know for one, you're gonna see these plants in my installations. You're going to see them in bouquets. You're going to see them in centerpieces. Plants and flowers, I'm forever changed by the big flower fight. <laughs> Plants and flowers will be it's part true. of my floral DNA. Yeah. That's awesome. My and biggest takeaway was yeah. just the basic design skills that any <laughs> designer would have had going into that competition. I had to, I feel like my journey spanned 10 times what like the average person or average florist on that show would have been because I had to learn all of the basics. So that was my biggest takeaway is I was like, okay, well now I can chicken wire anything. Yeah. Okay, so I realized, I think it was the first challenge, I realized that I was in a little bit of trouble um, because I didn't, I didn't have, a, I don't know why, but I didn't have this expectation that Jordan wasn't going to know some of the things that I knew. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of thought, well, she's been to the workshop, she probably mm -hmm. absorbed some of it, and you did. But uh, every challenge was teaching, like teaching a workshop, was mm -hmm. teaching Jordan how to use the products and create the design. Only problem was I didn't actually know how to do it. Doing, so I'm trying yeah. to teach her how to do something I don't know, which is not my thing. Normally, I'm that can teach that piece. Yeah. So it was, it's interesting because I have traveled the world with Sarah and been, I've been to every workshop Sarah's done in the last three years for the most part. But my job is not to be in attendance. Yeah. My job is to make sure the attendees are getting what they need. I'm doing social media. I'm simultaneously running emails, writing emails, running the website, doing customer support. So make, I'm there, make, but I'm not. not. The scissor list shows up. Yeah, like exactly. You have exactly. Off there. So I'm there, but while Sarah is teaching, I don't have the time to be listening to that. So I did absorb some stuff, but it, it really isn't like I've been learning at every <laughs> workshop. That's not my job, you know? Yeah. But on the show, I learned a lot. That was my job. You've been, Jordan, you've been doing the most ultimate marketing for Intrigue Designs. I can yeah, say, as a marketer, like what you're doing is huge for your brand and for, yeah, for you guys, this is amazing. Like mm -hmm. how, have you seen more opportunities open or, I mean, are you just looking into more ideas like this, more multimedia kind of production? Where mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Good. I'll tell you that. My focus is on the flower world, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do everything in my power to use this platform to help me open up doors mm -hmm. for as many of my flower community as I can. Yeah. I don't even know what that means, but 
I know that there's so much talent in our industry and, you know, designers in general are just someone that I, they're, they're people I connect with. And it just so happens that designers within the Intrigue Teachers community, um, just as you're part of the Intrigue Teachers community, does not mean I taught you anything. Um, to me, it means that you are giving, uplifting, supportive, free-spirited florists that whether you're an AIFD designer or you're a, a homegrown designer or you're a just started design today, everybody is helping each other. So, um, and I want to do my best to help these designers that are naturally uplifting each other. And that's been a wonderful thing that we've already started seeing from the show is people reaching out saying, I didn't know this was a career. I didn't know you could get an education in flowers. I want to be a florist. I want to learn. And that is really, you know, one of the reasons we did the show is to show people, hey, look, this is beautiful and fun and you can do it. Absolutely. You know, I, I talk about this publicly a lot is that, you know, I didn't know flowers were a career option. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I kind of just didn't know what I wanted to do. I felt like this kind of like what is it when that paper bag or the plastic bag flies to the wind? The most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like a plastic bag <laughs> drifting <laughs> through the wind. Wanting to start again. I always just felt like I didn't have direction. And it wasn't until I found flowers that I really felt that connection. And how is it that my whole life this didn't get introduced to me? Mm -hmm. So I love that right now there's so many children, young adults, even older adults like second career adults this show is touching so many people and giving them this love for this creative outlet outlet yeah, yeah that i'm so passionate about mm -hmm. and even me somebody who grew up as an artist with a career in the creative arts nobody ever told me hey did you know that flo like there's flower art as well florists are artists i never I grew up in, in visual art, theat theater, um, performance arts. Never once did I know, and I was in an art career, so. It's all a means of expression. Judy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and I think that you guys are just moving and motivating the industry going forward. Um, I wanna give you guys a chance just because, you know, we're, we're still in this, uh, in this quarantine, things are starting to open up, but, um, you know, I'm just curious what do you guys have coming up or, you know, are you guys, um, holding off on, on some extra workshops until the future? Just want to share with you. Yeah. Guys. So we did have, we had our, um, San Diego workshop, which is the first tour stop of 2020. Um, I'm sorry. It was the second tour stop of 2020. Um, we did have to reschedule that. We have not announced a new date. We're just waiting to see kind of what happened. We want to make sure that we can announce a new date and stick to it, not to reschedule three times. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's kind of what we had. Uh, in July, at the end of July, it looks like this is all going to go full steam ahead. We are going to be in Homer, Alaska for our peony adventure. Um, we had temporarily held ticket sales for Alaska. So those that were joining us, they still have their ticket, but we had not been selling any new mm -hmm. seats um, because we wanted to wait to see what happened. But I've been feeling this week like it's time that we should set a date and we should open up ticket sales again. So we're going to be in Homer, Alaska. Alaska right now is completely open. Uh, they social distance just by nature. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be there on this beautiful peony farm that sits mm. on the edge of the Kekamek Bay where you can see the beautiful mountain line and the the, what is it this? Is, the glaciers that cut through. Oh my gosh. It's one of the most beautiful places I think I've ever been. Beautiful. We did a workshop there last year, and pretty much as soon as we saw it, we knew we were like, oh, we're coming back. We're coming back. back. Well, so that hope comes back. By, uh, by um, Alaska Perfect Peony in, in Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we have. And then that's the summer. And then we don't have anything again until the fall. Uh, so tour stop wise, we are always working on new online opportunities. We already have the Intrigue Teachers website where you can go and find a bunch of online learning. Um, and we're always working behind the scenes on producing more content for that. Yeah. Things we teach most, or not most, one of the things I feel like I teach best is our marketing and our PR skills. Uh, I know that I am good at marketing. I'm good at social media. I'm good at, at that element. So I think our most successful classes online have been the uh, sales for luxury luxury wedding industry, um, 
like how to get booked for television spots. Yeah, there's a lot of great yeah. stuff on there. But it's not business. We also have design online design tutorials as well. If you're at home and you don't yet feel comfortable going somewhere public for classes, most of our stuff you can do online. Social distancing is safe. That segues to something else that maybe you can help me with. Uh, for a long time, it's only been me teaching on the Intrigue Teaches site. And we actually just to kind of test it out. We brought in one of our cast members and friends, Farmer Nick and yeah. Taylor and the yeah. planting dropper. We brought yeah. in to do a little plant tutorial. And it really got me thinking, I, I want to open up the Intrigue Teaches educational portal to other designers. You know, there's so many designers out there with so much talent that teach so well that just need a platform. So uh, we don't know how we're going to do it yet, but I just recently decided I'm going to open this platform up to bring other educators on and help them share their expertise because I like I can only teach so much and that's a future thing though. You won't yeah. find that on the website right now. Well, you always have Jeff Fresh and we have a lot of great customers and talented people that we work with as well. So don't even worry. Yes. Yeah. We need to like have Aliska. Aliska. Do you know that she sent me this on the day of the launch? Me I have yes. one too, but it's not here. <laughs> I I love my Aniska's flower crown. I wore amazing. I wore the pink one to death. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> They they do such amazing work, and I love oh, yeah. I love the preserve aspect. Honestly, we didn't get to talk mm -hmm. about the sustainability of it, but this is something that's sustainable. That you know, that I mean, it's something that you know if everyone's getting into the trend. Jeff Fresh, of course, sells all the preserve stuff too, and yeah, I think that's all great. It's beautiful, Jordan. You gotta send me a picture of you wearing yours. Don't worry, yeah, we'll make I sure know, to I have do to bring that. Well, house so that we can start wearing it for all of our interviews. It's yeah. mine's just at my house. We'll throw it in as an extra, I promise. Before the end of it, it'll be a cute photo of you two wearing them. Yeah. Cute. That'd be um, cute. Well, really, ladies, thank you so much for your time. I swear thank I could you. talk to you for hours, um, but, you know, I just, I'm really grateful. I'm glad you all are doing well, and mm -hmm. I hope that, you know, all the best for you guys, your business, and, uh, and your families. And I, I know Intrigue Designs is just going to go the sky's the limit. Thank you for, for you know, always giving Jeff Fresh a, a voice and an opportunity. So you guys are awesome. We love you too. Love you. We love you. All right, thank you guys all for tuning in. Until next time of the Fresh Take, this was Sarah and Jordan and Ashley. Thank hey, you bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye.